The desert sky glittered with stars as the pack of warhounds lounged outside El Teque's city gates. Though months had passed since their last battle, Gula and his soldiers remained on high alert. I grow tired of these endless training exercises, grumbled Zazigu, snapping lazily at a bird that nearly landed on his head thinking he was a rock. When do we do what we know best? Patience, brother, replied Gula, scratching his ear. I suspect the human king has forgotten who truly won the battle against the Levantines. Akkad snorted. King Senesheri, that giant beard wags more than his tongue keeps promises. At this, the other dogs rumbled with laughter that swelled from their bellies. Kitu rolled onto her back, paws swaying loosely as she let the rough ground below her scratch a spot along her spine that itched. Joke all you want, said Gula, but I believe the human doubts our skill. He likely credits his pathetic arrow fodder for our past victory. Zagzigu's jowls curled into a fearsome snarl, and his voice boomed a full octave lower than the rest. Does he think us common mutts? We are warriors, bred to serve Assyria's glory. You know how humans thirst for fame, Gula continued, but we know the truth. He gazed meaningfully at his fellow dogs. Kitu bared her fangs. When our skills go unused like this, trouble brews. A kingdom of well-fed dogs with no enemy is ripe for disobedience. Akkad paced, his stocky frame bristling with pent-up aggression. I tire of this oasis city filled with strutting men and boredom. How many different wares need to be sold in the markets here before they start to realize there's more to life than just going home every night. I could say this much more simply. My jaws crave the taste of foreign conquest. Gula surveyed his restless pack, then lifted his nose to the glimmering sky. A dry wind howled past, carrying the scent of opportunity. Worry not, brothers and sister. Our time will come again. He smiled, his ear twitching. Until then, as the wise three-legged hound Deet says, let's switch things up. I also tire of waiting. The dogs all lifted their noses, smelling the air. Gula paced before the assembled pack of dogs, his nose twitching as he prepared to impart wisdom. The motley assortment of hounds, mastiffs, terriers, and other breeds sat at attention, some scribbling notes with their paws. Welcome to Advanced Warfare Strategy. I am Gula, your instructor, he paused dramatically. Some of you may doubt that a small, scrappy dog like myself merits teaching this class. But doubt not, for though I lack the size of a Mastiff or the swiftness of a Saluki, I possess a cunning tactical mind. That, after all, is how I've always earned my living. He paused for affirmation, which arrived swiftly as the class rumbled with attentive barks and growls. We can't all be Molossians, am I right? Gula said with a sideways smile. The dogs all laughed, some of them yipping with delight at the cheeky joke. They were all well aware of who Gula's closest companion and friends were. Unfortunately, I must hang my fangs and battle-scarred paws up on the wall and come talk to you lot. Why? because my strategic skills are of more use to the future of dog kind than they are echoing in the palace walls. You are bright hope for hounds, not an old dog like me. He turned around and paced along the tall wall of the city where he had asked the pups to gather. Now, on to our first lesson, exploiting terrain. 
consider the following scenario. We were ambushed in a canyon by a thousand Levantine charioteers. I quickly ordered my forces up the slopes, taking cover behind boulders while humans rained arrows and spears down upon the enemy. Their chariots were useless on the uneven terrain, and we cut them down en masse from above. By sunset, their elite force was obliterated, thanks to our usage of the landscape's natural defensive positions. The dogs scribbled notes eagerly, some looking smug that their breed was good at climbing. Gula continued on. The minutes turned to hours as he opened the lid on his years of experience for the pups to absorb. Deception and psychological warfare are also critical skills. One time, we faced a platoon of Kushite cavalry trained on spear warfare. Brute strength posed an obvious challenge. So we crafted life-sized dummies of our Assyrian human allies and placed them along our front line. When the cavalry charged, they were startled to see what looked like armored warriors blocking our ranks. Momentary confusion allowed us to surge from the sides and overwhelm them through speed and numbers. We won the day through intellect, strategy of the mind, and a willingness to execute quickly as a team rather than merely aggress blindly as so many of our enemies had tried. This elicited some barked affirmations from a few of the dogs, while the more studious ones again jotted notes down. Now, divide into groups and strategize your approach to securing a well-defended oasis citadel. As the dogs broke into teams, Gula circled between them, eavesdropping and critiquing their plans. No, no, a direct frontal assault would be catastrophic given their archers. Use scouting parties to analyze weaknesses first. After he approved several inventive strategies, Gula called the class back to order. Excellent work. Remember, unconventional tactics can often triumph over brute strength. Leverage your unique attributes, speed, sense of smell, night vision, and outthink your foe. He paused for a moment. Once he had their attention, he spoke loudly and brightly. Good dogs. The dogs barked eagerly, tails wagging at Gula's praise. We'll end there for today. All right, warriors, on your paws. Let's go for a little run. Hydrate and meet me outside. The sand is calling our names. Can you hear it? Yes, Commander! The newly formed pack of students stood as one and remained frozen, waiting for dismissal. Gula paused for a moment, looked around the room, and allowed them to fully feel the respect of his rank. Out! His voice was low and sharp. Yes, Commander! The dogs bolted for the door. Gula sighed, picking at his bone, as he shared a meal with his wife Ninciana in their modest clay brick home. It's been over a year since King Sennacherib last utilized us dogs in battle, he grumbled. Despite our proven skill, he refuses to deploy us on any of his campaigns. Ninciana nudged her husband's paw comfortingly. Patience, dear. Our time will come again. Will it? Gula snapped, bristling. That arrogant human struts about claiming glory for victories we won through blood and sacrifice. Meanwhile, my tactical talents waste away in this cursed city. He gnawed angrily on an oxbone, growling in frustration. Lindsayana studied him for a moment before speaking gently. 
She was a more delicately built war dog, though her lithe frame brimmed with wiry strength earned through rigorous training. Her fur was a tawny hue, flecked with black accents that granted her natural camouflage when ranging through the deserts on covert missions. Large pointed ears framed an elegant fox-like face, her muzzle narrow and eyes rounded. She carried herself with disciplined poise, moving with fluid precision honed by generations of females serving in roles of stealth, reconnaissance, and speed. Ninciana's quiet confidence projected approachability that complemented her mate Gula's brash energy. Like any born to a serious warrior class, Ninciana's mind was as sharp as her reflexes. She balanced her scrappy partner's cunning and improvisation with wisdom and restraint. In conversation, her calming tone would smooth disagreements and illuminate shrewd solutions amidst loud egos. On hunts or during battle, her patient tracking skills balanced Gula's restless impulse to spring every trap early. I know your skills feel wasted. Sennacherib's reign is fading. There are whispers that his sons plot against him. The king isolates himself, surrounded only with the most spineless advisers. His family is devouring itself from within. Gula's ears perked up as he listened. Ninciana continued. Many dogs have abandoned the palace entirely. They want no part in Sennacherib's crumbling rule. Gula considered this tail beginning to wag. You believe my opportunity for leadership could return. In time, yes, Ninciana assured. For now, be patient. Our pack remains strong. Many still recognize your gifts. She nudged Gula playfully. And know that no matter what, your worth is clear to me. Gula licked her cheek, feeling affirm that until the time was right, he should continue to instruct, lest his tradecraft begin to atrophy. Maybe you bring your old friend Zagsigu by to speak to your pupils. Ninciana suggested gently. Gula nodded. Yes, I'll do that. The evening air was balmy beneath the palm grove as Zagzigu settled his massive frame onto the grass to address the young students before him, though age had begun to trace greys through his fur. Now that he had been forced to slow his savage lifestyle, an aura of power still surrounded the colossal Molossian war dog. Welcome, pups. Tonight, I will tell you of our conquest of Egypt and how clever Gula's quick thinking turned likely ruin into great victory. The students' ears perked up eagerly at prospect of hearing their grizzled teacher recount past heroics. Picture the Nile's fertile delta overrun. Our army was at risk of being slaughtered against the river's edge. But Gula conceived a brilliant gambit. Zagzigu described the chaotic clash. Pharaoh, Pie's vengeful forces encircling the Assyrian regiments along the reedy banks. Arrows flew thick, felling man and hound alike, trying to form any defense. I myself had slain into the hundreds that day, but we were outmatched. As I faced down an immense Nubian war rhino, I accepted my end. Just then, Gula's squad arrived, disguised as local merchants, with carts of supposed grain sacks. The giant Molossian smiled, remembering his friend's daring ingenuity. But the carts, in truth, held small teams of our fastest dogs. As Gula engaged the rebel leader in distraction, they burst forth and scattered explosives into the Egyptian front lines before retreating. It was chaos. Zagzigu continued, enjoying the expressions of his enrapt students as they heard of Egyptians reeling from the blasts, while Gula ordered the Assyrian cavalry charge forward through the gaps. His quick thinking 
allowed us to shatter their ranks and achieve total root. I still recall Gula laughing at the sight of enemies chased into the river by their own rampaging rhinos and elephants driven mad by noise. The students howled and yipped eagerly at the tale's climax, marveling at Gula's creativity. Zagzigu let the campfire drama die down before continuing solemnly. That day I learned two great lessons. True warriors innovate and adapt to the unexpected. And the greatest strength lies not in fang or claw, but loyalty to one's brothers. He gestured to the various scars marking his grizzled hide. These healed wounds attest what we can endure when we fight as one. Remember that, pups. The 690 BC. Eleven years later. The two teenage dogs, Belu and Kalbi, trotted through the golden fields of grain, swishing their tails playfully. Quite the somber affair last night, wasn't it? Said Belu, nibbling on a stalk. Poor Gula finally joined his ancestors in the great doghouse beyond. Kalbi snorted. Did you hear Zak Zigu howling mournfully for hours on end? I half expected him to fling himself into Gula's burial pit. Except he wouldn't fit, Belu retorted, jumping after a dragonfly. The two chuckled, continuing through the field. Gula must have lived, what, 16 years, mused Belu. That's ancient for a war dog, and never saw battle since his prime, said Kalbi wistfully. What a waste of talent, Belu nodded. Remember his strategy classes, though, gods. Some of the crazy schemes he came up with to fool the enemy. Kalbi's tongue lolled out as he laughed. Oh, yes. Like the time he said he and his pack rolled in fresh manure to disguise their scent before ambushing a platoon of giant Kushite rhinos. The look on the other dogs' faces was priceless. As they crested the hill, Elteke came into view below. Its walls and stone buildings, once a beacon of Assyrian might, now a withering relic. Belu stared pensively. Do you ever wonder if this empire's time is ending? The human troops get softer every year. And have you seen how few iron-hearted dogs remain? Kalbi pondered this, tail drooping slightly. I suppose you're right, brother. Perhaps Assyria's age of conquest is waning. What does that mean for mutts like us? The pair sat in contemplative silence for a moment, before Belu nipped Kalbi's ear affectionately. Let's not worry about that now. We have our whole lives ahead of us. And who knows, maybe some clever young dog will revitalize this kingdom's fighting spirit inspired by the great Gula's teachings. Kalbi yipped excitedly, and the two raced off, thoughts returning to play. The novel and serialized audiobook Hounds of War is written and produced by James Eldridge. It is a work of fiction, However, King Sennacherib's most enduring work was the rebuilding of Nineveh, his official residence. Using prisoners of war for labor, he extended and beautified the city, laying out streets, restoring and extending public buildings, and erecting a great inner wall nearly eight miles long, which encircled the city and an outer wall. Both walls still stand today. To see images from this story or purchase the book in hardcover or Kindle versions, visit houndsofwarbook.com. 